Why, hello there, Sean here, and I am talking about the Elden Ring gameplay preview that happened today, November 4th, 2021, where we got like 20 minutes of gameplay footage, and it's the first real Elden Ring gameplay footage we've gotten, so we have a lot to talk about. And what I've decided to do is a really loose video where I sort of do a show and tell of things. I've watched this a few times today and I wanted to point out things, give my thoughts and impressions. And the reason of doing this versus a more heavily edited video is because as I'm recording, there are streamers and content creators and press who are playing the network test right now. And the network test is happening for everybody at the end of next week. So there's going to be a ton of more Elden Ring footage coming out. So breaking it down into any of the parts, I feel like we don't have the whole picture yet, but we got a ton today and I really want to talk about it. So I thought it would be fun to sort of do a show and tell. What I'm going to do is show off stuff and I would love for you to, you know, get into the comments and because I'm not going to get everything. So let me know things you've noticed that I do not bring up here. And uh, if I do teach you a few things, maybe consider giving a like and uh, either way, let's have some fun. Let's get right into it. So I am using my video editing software. This is how I sort of analyze videos. My video editing software allows me to pause, zoom, frame through things really easily. So I just thought I would sort of bring y'all in on it and uh, basically go through it again and see what we can uh, point out and discover and just uh, have a good time. So right here, this area, and I'm gonna start using my tools now. So there's a few things we can point out right away. So one is there's this church. We've seen this church a few times before and in the distance, keep note of this, there's this gatehouse, which we've also seen before. And we've seen that in the network trailer. Uh, so we're right near the beginning of what we now know is an area called Limgrave. Elden Ring is set here, in the lands between. And I wanted to point out here, while we are uh, panning around, so this area, this sort of swampy area over here, this is where we will be in contact with the wyvern in the footage a little later. And then I wanted to point out that there's these two um, sort of mini aired trees. Something we've seen in this screenshot, which I will put in right here. And it is something where, from that perspective, it doesn't look like there's that much space. But the sense of scale in this game is just so incredible. And it's so much more space. There's a lot that can happen between those two trees. But from that screenshot, it doesn't look like it. This is a site of grace acting as a place of rest for the player. And while we have that set of Lost Grace activate, I wanted to point out that up here in the top left, you can see an NPC who they don't end up interacting with, but we've actually seen this NPC before in the gameplay trailer. They are someone who, you know, kind of reminds me of the, um, Partner from Dark Souls 1, so I get some partner vibes from this particular NPC, and I, I know some other people feel the same way. But let's take a look at this uh, site of Lost Grace, and you can see the guidance coming from it shortly. Occasionally, Grace will manifest right. Yeah, so you can see this sort of ribbon of light, and it's sort of pointing you towards the next site of Lost Grace which we learned is actually just beyond that church in the distance. So they're kind of close together, which when you see it on the map is, is a little funny. It looks a little clustered together, sort of like a Dark Souls 3 situation. But what I think is maybe going on here and maybe a little different is that for one, the map is so vertical that there can be a lot of stuff happening in a relatively short, like, horizontal distance but i think the other thing is that this is most likely pretty close after the tutorial so they might just be sort of easing you in a little bit another interesting thing i wanted to talk about is you see all of these like banners 
or something over here. I'm not quite sure what these are, but um, I just wanted to make note of them just because they sort of remind me of the Elden Ring sort of logo, that sort of sigil that might represent the Elden Ring. So I just wanted to point that out because it kind of reminds me of how you have the, the shaft of light sort of going up and then you have the arc at the top. Let's continue on. Rays of guiding light. And look at how smooth that is getting on the horse and that double jump right there. Man. Of course, we're free to choose whether to follow this guidance or head off to explore. And there's a goat right there. I mean, I know you saw the goat, but I just wanted to point out there's a goat right there. In a different direction. So now they did do a slight cut. And I think that the scene is relatively close over sort of on the left hand side. You can see behind the trees, the gatehouse, you can see Storm Vale. So it's relatively in the same area. And the other thing I wanted to point out was something that someone on Discord, on my Discord server pointed out, and that's that there's a person standing up there. I don't know if that's an NPC or who, but there's a little person standing up there, but probably more interestingly in this particular shot is that there's one of these caravans that we actually ride past, but they will visit more later. Those like harpoon things look terrible in them. It looks brutal. So we're done in that marsh now. And look how fast this dragon comes in. Boom. Classic Dark Souls <laughs> death noise from the uh, guys. And th this fight is really cool and I love to see how the horse controls so well in this fight. You can especially see that right here, how they turn so easily. Let's, let's see, I want to see, I don't know for sure if there's any sigils that show up as they're performing that spell. Let's see. I don't think there is. I just wanted to see, let's frame a little bit. It's always fun to see the animations frame by frame. Very cool looking effect. Nope, no sigils there. Looks like a fun fight, I think. You can see them guarding with the sword there. I love how flexible and mobile the horse is. Awesome. And then this is interesting here with this finishing move that seems to happen where you can stab in and this is apparently, you know, like breaking their, their stance as uh, the narrator will talk about a little bit later. Can you hear me? Help me. I'm stuck. Hello? I was not expecting to see Pop Boy, but I was very happy that this happened. Or should I say, uh, Alexander of the Iron Fist. And I just wanted to take a moment to pause. You, you can see it pretty clearly, but we have this aired tree symbol. And I just wanted to take a moment to zoom in on it just to get that extra bit of detail. See if there's anything. Nothing super interesting that pops out that I can see, but you know, the air tree seems to be in this shield symbol, which makes me wonder if that has to do something with protecting the air tree. I feel like down here at the bottom, actually, maybe I'm just seeing things. It almost feels like it's like a, a dragon's head. It, it like sort of like you could see like a get in real close. You can see like a couple like little eyes, maybe, you know, I don't know. But so that's the air tree symbol for him. And then let's listen in on this conversation. Oh, my stars. I'm so happy to see you. I am Alexander, also known as the Iron Fist. 
And as you can see, I'm stuck here. Please, can you help me out of this? Let's help him out. Put those doubts to rest. I'll be just fine. I'm very well trained. Give it your all, I say. I like how he busts out a club for this. I'm glad that the pop boy is a solid NPC bro. Ah, Probably has well a tragic played, story. Sir. Well played. Oh, that's well played. Mighty wallop of yours almost spelt the end of me. <laughs> ah. All right, I want to go back for just a moment. Just, just. This time, instead of focusing on Alexander, just the weather and how much of a difference it makes. Because I think this is a similar area, but just this sort of fog in here and stuff. It's it's nice to see the the weather and day night system in action. Well played. Oh, that mighty wallop of yours almost spelt the end of me. <laughs> ah. Well, we've seen sort of a screenshot that is in a very similar location, and uh, this looks like it's straight out of a painting, which I think it kind of is. And let's zoom in on just a few things here as we look around. So one, we got this little encampment down here. Which is pretty cool so it's sort of that bottleneck on that pathway where you have to get around them and I can't tell here what symbol is on top of these tents I've noticed that the, the different tents do have an association that sort of indicates perhaps which like organization or Lord that they are working for and let's see what else we can take a look at so we have another view of this ruined church or something in the distance which we don't get to see any closer but you can see a bit more detail and as we'll learn on the map that's coming up pretty soon beyond this is just the ocean this is sort of the west western like northwestern edge of the map it seems and then you have the there's more ocean or sea over there you have your castle and then this is the volcano that we've seen glimpses of from other angles before. So let's continue. Hear the ambient music. Let's see. So you have the air tree. You can see in this shot, you can see three of these sort of airdlings, which is what I call these smaller glowing air tree things that aren't the air tree is there they're more physical but their leaves are glowing and they're pretty large and then we've sort of seen this all from that previous screenshot before but this this is the stuff right here i was not expecting to get as much of the map and you can see on things like these edges here that it's that you get map fragments and so if you don't have a fragment for it it's just that piece so you can see where the different fragments come together and what you'll get from a few of these fragments and the other bit i wanted to just note is it says early day down here which makes me wonder how much um you may be having to do things at a certain time of day potentially for like quest lines or certain dungeons or something like that to gain access i think they could do some really cool stuff with that and just looking at the stuff they do show so this um this southern bit right here we haven't seen any of really um because this this area i think could be the tutorial section and um potentially i'm not sure but uh you then you have this where if you look up here i think that's the first like set of lost grace because you can see at the second 
instead of Lost Grace is that church. And then over to the right is this marsh where we saw the wyvern fight. So we've seen this area, but we haven't seen down here. I think it's um right about in this zone is about the farthest back we ever see. And I actually think you can see, so this area right here, you can see all those little tombstones sticking out on the map. I think that it is this screenshot that we've uh, seen and that leads back toward what I what I'm holding to right now is being sort of the uh, tutorial section of the game because we haven't seen back there. Just other things worth noting is there's a little boat over to the right hand side. And then I really like these guys rowing their boat. I did a video where I as Vadi said that he talked about some people rowing and I can't believe I actually got it pretty accurate. There's also a barrel floating in the ocean. So, um, and then there's this little, there's a little island out there. So I wonder what's going on. I wonder how you get over there. The map can prove useful when exploring the world. A map can you prove useful when exploring the world. So as I mentioned down here at the bottom now, over on the left, we see where we sort of started the video at that site of Lost Grace. And then you see the church with another set of Lost Grace sort of covering it up. And then looking over farther to the right, we can see one of the Airdlings shown sort of over here in this woodsy zone over to the right. And um, then I don't know what's going on over here. This, this looks, I know that there's been mention of a red swamp that there was a screenshot shown. And uh, I wonder if that could be it. Red Swamp Air. We haven't really seen very far over there because this right at the top here, so you can see the marker, the top left, shows the marker where the player's looking right now. They're looking out toward the um, sort of, I call it like the Duke's Castle because it sort of has Duke's Archives style architecture. We're looking out there. So behind the player is... Stormvale, that large structure. And then what you see there is the bridge leading towards this tower that's sort of close to the air tree, but we never actually see the air tree on the map because as you can tell from this map here, and we'll get a slight glimpse of in just a little bit, there's water surrounding the air tree. And based off of little things like this broken building right here, it's, it makes me think that, um, it wasn't always like that and um it's sort of it's sort of broken to a certain extent and then um otherwise we see a bunch of markers i think these markers showing up that are sort of showing these structures are perhaps something that you get when you go to the top of a watchtower or something but one thing i was just noticing that i don't really have an answer for is when i we talked earlier about the different sort of smaller air trees that's one air tree but i don't see the other air tree actually shown but i would think it would be sort of north of it so it's interesting to see it seems like they're all marked but maybe that's not the case okay so now this is the area where we're currently looking at and you can see the air the mini airdling off to the left and you can see the ruins with that church building over here. So that this is the mini airdling in the distance. There's the church sort of right in the middle of the shot right now. And then you can see some of the ruin stuff. And it looks like there's another one of those markers like indicating this like submerged town that looks like a custom marker. That must be something that pops up like when you go on top of a watchtower or something. We've heard that certain things will be marked on your map when you go to the top of these watchtowers. And I think the watchtowers, at least what I think is most likely right now, is that these watchtowers are some of these structures that bridges are heading out to. Some of these tall towers that you see around the world. One thing I wanted to look at, I know we're getting to this exciting spirit spring, I think it's called. 
but I always am on the lookout for some of these glowing plants, which I think are some of the resources that we will be able to harvest. And I hadn't seen before this, gl I, think, I think that's a glowing sort of yellow plant, but just wanted to point that out. And then we're going to go on the spirit spring where we get a really cool shot of the air tree. So there's nothing really above the air tree that you can see, but it like ascends into the sky. It's sort of hard to tell what's even, if there is something above it or what's happening at the top there. Spirit Springs. Sorry to cut you off, but I just wanted to point out here that you can see that the air tree has a bunch of water in front of it. And then it seems like it's sitting in the middle of like a body of water, potentially. can be used while on horseback to launch high into the air and I wanted to point out a couple of things here um, once again we got sheep walking around and keep an eye on the ground because there's some ro some things rolling around and I think those are the little uh, the screenshot that Katow did showing a beetle and I think these are the guys rolling around here so Keep an eye on that as I progress the video. This allows for stress-free traversal of rolling. areas. I'll bring it back. Sort of one of the more obvious ones. On the left, as I frame back, you can see a little ball rolling along the ground. You can see a couple of them, actually. So I think that'll be something you can harvest for resources, which is sort of fun. Here, I'll, I'll move it forward slowly. Yeah, so you get those little balls rolling on the ground. Of areas with a great deal of verticality. And this, I have no clue what's happening here because it looks like... At first I thought these were like little graces or something. But I think they just might be like items or something that maybe a special item you get when like lightning is striking a place. I think that'd be kind of cool, but I don't know if something more is going on with the lightning here. Let me know in the comments what you think, if you think there's something more to this lightning strike happening. And then I just wanted to call out, we got one of these troll dudes walking around over there at the top that the player doesn't interact with, but it's just fun to see them roaming about. And uh, just to orient ourselves, you can see here in the distance that this is that gatehouse that we've seen. So we started the video sort of over there in the distance, and now we're sort of on the other side, right near the gatehouse. Some birds, lots of wildlife. It's so alive for a Souls game. And then, um, small detail. Uh, you can just see, and man, I think the rain looks really cool here. You can see one little glowy yellow plant right there and then you can see over there a glowy red plant and i'm sure that it won't take too long of actually playing the game to know like what those will do for you resource wise some birds and i just love like just going back through here i just wanted to show just emphasize it is like the movement and control of the spectral steed looks so like easy and sort of arcadey but in a really good way because i think it looks really natural to control and you're not sort of wrestling against the horse while you're riding it and i'm actually curious I'm not sure, it's probably just a plant, but I just wanted to see. Let's see. Uh, oops, I don't think I actually went back far enough. Is there a falling, oh, there's an item there, and I think it's an item, or maybe it's another plant, but just at the bottom left, so. Doesn't, the rain looks awesome, I think. Got some nice ambient music going. And I wanted to point out here that I mentioned earlier that these little encampments that they have banners on their tents. 
you can actually see the lion banner here in the june sgf trailer you saw a different uh i guess a different crest on tents and then they're in a different region so i think these are showing off the different regions there's a lot of people there it's really cool the carriage over there is carrying treasure an opportunity too good to pass up and so where we're looking right now is we're sort of looking back kind of toward the area where we started the video and it's almost looks like a completely different place because it's just so much different than it looks before just because of the weather and the time of day it's really it's really dramatic color differences we'll prepare for we'll prepare for combat but we're looking at the menu right now and i'm curious to know what people think of this sort of different i think it's a much cleaner sort of design for the menu than it was in like souls games and stuff so i think i like it overall but it is just something a little different from what i'm used to but while we're here so you have over here on the right hand side so over here we have level 23 runes held and then we get to the stats so you have vigor mind which is a new one so we're not quite sure what that is for um endurance strength dexterity intelligence faith all pretty normal and then arcane which is a little different that's something that they had in bloodborne but and then you have your health points you have your focus points stamina equip blood and it's interesting it no longer shows like a percentage but it's giving sort of your your role class or your you know equipment how that's going to affect your character it's a medium load so it just sort of tells you which one you're in instead of like having to know the thresholds and then you have poise and discovery and memory slots and i think memory slots are probably for spells and then looking over here on the left hand side this is the crafting tab of the menu and it's just fun to look at these different items because some of them like you have the the bone knife over here and you can see what is required to make these bone knives which is pretty cool so you get it through foraging and hunting animals and then there's some really wild looking ones like these little colored stones down here on the left hand side and then next to it is this like wisp of like it looks sort of like runes that like golden dust and then you have something like up at the top like this like looks kind of like a nasty root or something and then next to it it's like you have a, a bird talon so it's got some interesting stuff here And then we'll see a little bit more about the crafting as we advance. A combat with some item crafting using materials found in the world. So these are sleep bone arrows, which we heard about in the impressions. If I didn't mention it, this is sort of like a remastered version of what was seen by press at Gamescom. It's not the exact same. Pretty cool. And then we see... They're definitely reusing noises, but I'm totally, totally fine with that. So we saw there, and I just want to back up, just because this is one of the things I like to do, is especially once you get to the combat, hopefully with the network test and stuff in the next week, we'll learn a lot more, but it is fun. So he's doing a jumping attack, and something that's sort of different in Elden Ring that we don't quite know about yet is that there's like this poise and when your poise is broken you go into this or enemies and players probably go into this animation where they're staggered and you can be reposted basically or you can get like a visceral attack done to you and that's what we're seeing here because jumping attacks are a good way to break an enemy's poise. Enemy stance can be broken with heavy strikes, yeah, such as when attacking from above. Let's see a skill being used with this one weapon, and they swap out their weapon. A variety weapon. of unique attacks can also be interchanged between weapons. See that curved sword skill. 
And I want to back up just a moment to look in the distance. Because I wanted to point out... There you go. I wanted to point out in the distance here that you can see some like big ass swords in the landscape. There's a whole bunch of them in the background there. And that one sword especially is pretty big. So um, it's just a cool landscape detail. The sense of scale in this world and like things being way outsized is very common. It's pretty cool. Watch it again. Sort of dash forward. Then we get to see the spirit in more perilous situations. We can summon spirits to assist us in battle. Like this jump arrow shot. Let's watch that again. That's just I think that's wicked cool. And I just like this whole setup. So you have well, for one thing, in the distance is the gatehouse, which I want to make note of, because this seems like a major route through this area is getting through this gatehouse. So it's cool that how they set up like this big enemy encampment right outside of it. But you have this tough area and you can summon just like horde. And I think this is these are guys we've seen in this screenshot where you can see this guy casting magic and. I think it's those guys, and in order to get these spirit summons, I believe you need to defeat the enemies first in order to be able to use them as a spirit summon. And I think you get an item or something that makes that available to you, and that's something you can customize at Sites of Lost Grace, as we learned from the game's calm impressions. Spirits vary greatly in Twin type, sword. so we look forward to players experimenting and finding their personal favorites. You see a lot of jumping attacks being used in order to finish off enemies. Broke the stance. That looks very cool. And this vista, just man, the color palette in this game is just outrageous. And I'm curious to see what this looks like at other times of day or if this skybox when you're in this area is just very yellowy or you know i'm so curious to see what this looks like at on like a clear night you know how that all works together and i wanted to point out sort of obvious but you have you have this dude right here and this looks a little bit similar to a guy we saw a very tiny bit of on the gameplay trailer, someone in the distance, when you're riding your horse past the area where you fight the wyvern. And um, I don't know if it's the same guy, but it looks a little bit similar. And I can't figure out what he's holding. It looks like a tiny hand or something is right there. But he's resting at this little fire. And I wonder if it has, if this is anything mechanical to these little fires around the world. Online multiplayer can also be enjoyed with players from other worlds, from cooperative to PvP and invasions. It's fun to see the jumping in action too, because you can fall quite a distance in this game without taking damage. And you can't use your spectral steed, so they they must have sort of have to account for that in areas where they expect multiplayer to be. Passing up an item, breaking my heart. I think this area is wicked cool. So we've seen these big enemies in this screenshot before, and it's cool to see you sneaking by them. It's sort of I would love to see combat with one, but I like this as sort of a potential like stealth segment. Deadly creatures stalk the they're forest, huge. so we'll use stealth to avoid detection. And there's a lot of them. I love the colors in this forest. And that tree right there is gigantic. I wonder if it's the glowing trees. One of them. We've come across a Alright, and now we have this guy. Who is a field boss, and field bosses or one of these like open world bosses and I'm trying to get a clear shot but he's got like a bone horse like 
it's hard, you know, like, I don't know how alive this horse looks in any situation, but he's sort of got this bone armor. Come across a boss guarding this area. We'll take it on with the help of our co-op partner. Well, I want to see here, one thing is I love looking at the sigils. I did a video about the different magic stuff and how there's like these sigils associated and it sort of tells a little bit of a story and as I thought here, so this this sigil is actually one we've seen in another screenshot. It has these two birds on either side and i've wondered if these birds relate to an area that i'm calling right now the burger king castle because it's got the burger king there but there's a lot of bird cages in that area and um it's cool to take a look at this because i wonder if that's then associated i have a whole video about it but i think my current speculation is that these sort of sigils sort of indicate perhaps which great rune or which uh, demigod that these uh, sigils that the magic being cast is sort of related to. But let's continue to watch this fight. The magic looks awesome in this game. This horse breathes fire. It's a real problem. I think this is a pretty cool fight though. And this is just incredible looking. And I wanted to point out and just clarify, because so this has this sort of purpley look and has this sort of cosmic effect. And we've noticed that magic like this doesn't have any sigils before you cast it. I just want to confirm that because it actually happens pretty quick. All of these sort of spells sort of start with this like cosmic sort of look but no sigil but man it looks so cool and then he has this red lightning sort of elemental magic effect with his weapon which looks a lot like the large golden eyed dragon and the lightning attacks that it used in the gameplay trailer Oh, and I want to show here so you can see the co-op partner is like using this dragon's head It's like summoning this dragon's head to breathe fire and this actually has a sigil before it as well That I want to show off because it only shows up for a brief moment Oops You can see them casting it in the background. And there's the sigil. And it's not one that I'm familiar with, but it looks pretty cool. So we already know that the other end is sort of a mirror of this left-hand side, but I can't really make out anything in particular. This isn't like an aired tree. So a lot of the other magic we've seen looks like aired trees. So um, this is one thing I am continuing to keep an eye on as we learn more about the game is what these different pictures for this magic could mean with these sigils it's just a fun visual way to sort of give some additional lore and flavor to the world this is very much like the dragon attack that we saw that's another sort of cosmic looking magic that just pummels him They're sort of showing off. You can fall really far in this game. I'm going to show off a little side dungeon here. And so these side dungeons will be explained momentarily, but I think they're pretty cool aspect of the world. But they're sort of like legacies in that it's more like classic souls, but like pretty small versions. 
Catacombs, caves, mines, and other dungeons can be found while out exploring the world. <laughs> These Love dungeons skeletons. each hold their own secrets. White from flares. Treasures to fierce and bosses. Sends fortress vibes. I love this little Jorge cosplayer. And this little stance he does for this illusory wall. <laughs> it's so funny. Really pretty flower. And this chest. This is just a Dark Souls 3 chest. Which, no shade. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. But the thing that gets me about these chests is it has that chain on it. And for anyone that's played Dark Souls, that chain means something. If there's not mimics in this game, don't put the chain on. Just just take the chain off. I don't care if you reuse the model. Then maybe just take the chain off. But we'll see. If there's mimics and they work the same way, fine. Keep the chain. But I just thought it was funny to see this chain here. Because it gives such an immediate indication of what to watch out for. So it seems pretty small overall. At least that side dungeon. And this upcoming cutscene is one that we had heard about from the Gamescom impressions. And this is with Melina, who is sort of like the firekeeper, maiden in black equivalent. But it's worth noting that it was said by Katow in the impressions and when he talked is that she's not as passive as other like firekeeper or made it in black and that she has her own sort of motivations and ambitions in the world so she seems like a really interesting character and we've seen this sort of cutscene happen in a couple different places so it must just be when you get to a certain number of lost graces greetings traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. See how she has like a tattoo or scar over one eye? I offer you an accord. We've reached Stormvale Castle, a large-scale dungeon which connects seamlessly with the surrounding Limgrave region. So we just got past the area where in the June gameplay trailer, where we fought that like scorpion dude. So it's just past that section. So they've beaten the boss to sort of get in the door. And I wanted to point out just small detail, but always fun sort of thing, is that you can see here on the, it looks like there's maybe a lion on there, sort of the, up here in this section, there's a lion sort of indicating, and you can see the banner because this is Stormvale, and we know that their crest is sort of a lion, and then they use the air tree. So, and then we have this dude. I would advise against taking the main gate into the castle. It's tightly guarded by hardened old hands. Oh, tr tr try the opening right here. The guards don't know about it. You'll breach the castle undetected. I like how you have these little story moments where you can kind of choose an option. Fair enough. You certainly don't have to trust me. <laughs> well, if you must go through the gates, I'll signal them to open. But of course, I'd advise against it. And this, this upcoming section with the gate where you're quickly rebuffed reminds me of Latria in Demon Souls. Like, if you could get the cadence down, that rhythm, you could 
kind of get past it. I like just how it's like, open the gate. But you are bombarded. But if you if you know it's coming, I think you could roll through that. Get those items at least. The main route seems risky, so we'll try entering through a back way. Uh, these FromSoft games, you gotta watch out for holes in your castle. And so what's about to happen right here? And I like how this character swaps out. So they're holding a sword initially. They swap out to an axe just to do this one skill. And then they swap to a halberd or a spear. And the other thing I wanted to point out before we advance is... So we're over at Stormvale. So it's the sea over here to the west. And I, I just... One thing I really love about the game and something that seems like Elden Ring is filled with in the world are these really interesting looking areas in the distance that don't seem like they're like a huge legacy dungeon or anything, but like what's going on over there with that like building on that cliff. And then there's like a big statue. It's so interesting. It's just like out there kind of in the sea. And that's an awesome looking skill. And I want to just go back quickly cause I can show off the uh, sigil that shows up right before the skill is done. Because it's it doesn't seem like it's just magic here where you can see it. It's a few different things. Oh my gosh. I love the skeletons. So. Okay, so there you go. You got a pretty good shot of it. So I, it doesn't, it's not in any particularly identifiable shape to me. It kind of looks like, you know, like a, a skeletal worm sort of coiling but this whole thing looks awesome it seemed like maybe he broke his stance but he chose to just finish him off and i really like how they have like this like sort of wind magic right here and later we'll see godric also have some sort of wind effect so maybe that's something to do with Stormvale and whatever they have going on. But just the idea that you're in this precarious platforming situation and you have this guy who might like knock you off with wind magic if you're not careful. Walking past some people. Extra cash should be taken. And I just wanted to quickly point out over to the left there, you can see a little item. Looks like you could platform, you could jump over and then get up to like a little secret. Should be taken when moving through dungeons, as visibility and terrain differ from when it's in the open. It's got so many. There's like three different levels at least. hope players enjoy getting a feel for the different types of areas and coming up with suitable strategies for just each. Just the door with something. And so this shot here is one we also saw from the ground level in the June gameplay trailer. And you can see the portrait off to the right and the, these limbs hanging in what seems like a dining hall or something. You could sort of see these rafters from there, but now we're up there. And you can see this enemy who seems to be an enemy from the leaked trailer who is this sort of screaming multi-limbed person who seemed like they would be from Stormvale and it's uh, fun to see them here in better detail who is not Godric but just another sort of like multi-limbed enemy who seems to be wielding a limb as a weapon which is a very from soft thing to do And I wanted to go back here just because you get a better shot of this. And we actually have a, a pretty clear version, and I will include it right here, that you can see there's this guy, and he's got this, like, lion person. But this person, the lion looks, looks very human with the hand on his shoulder. And I can't tell if these are maybe the same person, and it's like a transformation or if it's just this guy and this lion are real tight pals and they like to wear very similar looking armor. But I'm also curious who this person is in relation to Godric, who is the current 
ruler of Stormvale. And this is just a really cool section showing off like how much having this jump button is just going to change how we explore around like Stormvale Castle. It's a really big area and it looks like you can get looks like you can get to so many places. Dungeons are complex and multi-layered, meaning they can be tackled from a number of routes. Nice to meet you. He's got the pointy is shoes. Roger is the name. Roger, or medium nice. hat Logan. You might have guessed. I'm looking for a little something here in the castle. When I'm not hot footing it from the troops, that is. And I wanted to point out that these statues in the background are the same statues that we've seen shown off in the screenshot of the hub. Except for in the situation with the hub, they're flowering. And while here, they don't have any flowers on them. But enough about me. What are you doing here in Stormvale Castle? This place is bristling with tarnished hunters, you know. Tarnished hunters. Sacrifice our kind for grafting. Not so a tiny bit of lore thing is it sounds like there's tarnished hunters who are using tarnished here at Stormvale to graft limbs onto Godric and the other non-tarnished inhabitants potentially but either way it's a it's a bad scene for a tarnished not exactly a place i'd stroll into without a purpose in mind so we frame back we can see that there's actually a response um here and it's he's asking why are you coming to stormvale because it's not a good place to be and you can either say in order to obtain a great rune or you can keep silent so just another bit of interesting dialogue that could play into a quest line or something else but i would definitely probably say in order to obtain a great rune because i would love to hear what he says about that and here we see this bird and we can see looking back this is the same bird most likely that is a summon for us in this screenshot and this is maybe if we kill this bird we can use it as a spirit summon in the future but right now it's just a winged pain in our ass i think these knights look awesome Right, you see that golden fog gate coming up. In this next boss fight, we challenge one rooms. of the demigods, ruler of Stormvale, Godric the Golden. This music slaps once the boss fight starts. We'll want to camp out on something he says. There's a true born heir. So mighty dragon, trueborn heir. Lend me thy strength, O kindred. Lend me thy strength, O kindred. So if Godric is part of the, the family, he's a demigod, that means he's either one of Marika's children or you know, one of Marika's children's children. I don't know exactly where he falls in the family tree, but if he's calling this dragon a trueborn heir and kindred, it makes me wonder, you know, if these dragons are also coming from Marika or if that, you know, whoever, if there is another parent, if it's the greater will or if it's, you know, another sort of deity in this world, how that may tie in with these dragons and what they have to do with these demigods. Deliver me unto seems like whatever happened they were fighting each other and his hands are 
Let's go back to that for a second. His hands are just nasty. Got, he's got a case of nasty hand. Look at that. That's bad news. Horrible. Ugh, horrible. He's got too many fingers, too. effect around him. He should not be able to flip like that. Holy moly. And this guy is like pumpkin troll. It's also cool to see how many golden flowers there are around. It's super aggressive. You see him with the dragon head on his arm. This was just a brief introduction to and Elden Ring's fundamentals. Done yet. There's a few other More small things to look at at a later date. There's not long to go now before release. In the meantime, we greatly appreciate your continued support. The tarnished will sort of soon return. Trailer. Some different music. Must extinguish thy flame. They will fight. And they So let's let's see what's happening here. This is a new scene. So you got the person here and you can see they're using some sort of golden kind of reminds me of miracle magic. Very clear air tree symbol that as I mentioned in a previous video um is the same as the symbol on top of some tents that we saw in an encampment in the gameplay trailer. And uh, so let's see what happens here. And they will die. So, oh. So what does this guy look like? So he's got, he's got a cool helmet. He's got like a, looks like a snake sort of bracelet wrapping around his arm. And he's wielding a giant axe with sort of a strange mass sort of near the base of it. For how else is a champion to be born? Man. I'm pumped. All right, and there you have it. That was going through the trailer. Picking it apart, looking at all the different little pieces. Let me know what you learned and let me know what you saw that I didn't point out here. I'd be very curious to hear because there's going to be little details that people are going to be finding for a while. If we have any time to get to it because the network test is coming up. And who knows what's going to be coming out between now and the release for Elden Ring. Things are really picking up. But I wanted to get this video out and I had a great time sort of going through this, pouring out everything. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And um, if you want to stay up to date on Elden Ring information, consider subscribing to my channel, The Lore Hunter. And uh, make sure you put the notification thing so it actually lets you know when I put up a video because I will continue to cover Elden Ring and analyze it and discuss it 
and just generally be very excited for release, which is coming up February 25th, 2022. And uh, I can't wait. So until next time, thanks for watching.